Alright, welcome back to my channel and this is my third video on digital logic. Today, I'm going to make a tutorial on how to design a digital clock. And this digital digital clock is a 12 hours version 1. So, it circulates from 0 seconds all the way to 11 hours, 59 minutes and 59 seconds. So, before you watch this video, I hope you have a solid understanding on logic gate and Carnot maps. And it is better if you know how to build a binary coded decimal counter first. A BCD counter. Now, let's see what we are going to discuss on today. First, we are going to do a general working principle of digital clock. And then we are going to design a mod 10, mod 6, and a mod 12 counter to be used in our digital clock. The third section is we are going to design a BCD to 7 segment conversion. Then we are going to connect all the parts and we will see if the circuit works correctly. Alright. So the first part, general working principle. In the showing the time of this clock, I'm going to use a 7 segment display. It's called 7 segment because it's this, it is divided into 7 different parts. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Sometimes, some manufacturer they will have little dots here, decimal point, and they will have what another connection specifically for lighting up this point. Let's say if you want the point so that you can show decimal numbers, but not today. So we want this to be in seconds, 00, 0 to 59, minutes and hours, hours from 0 to 12, I mean 0 to 11. So, you want 0 to 9 in these two places, right? And you want 0 to 5 in these two places. So, you need a mod 10 counter for these places and a mod 6 counter for this. And the, to show the hours, you need a mod 12. My last video is on counter. So, if you don't have any idea on how counter works, you can refer to that video. It is split into the two parts, but part two should be sufficient to make a light introduction on how to build a counter. Alright, first, we need a counter. Also, you can see here that I mentioned that you can Cascade a mod 2 counter to a mod 6 counter to build a mod 12 counter. But today I will redesign the mod 12 counter because it involves BCD to 7 segment display, so it is a bit more complicated. You need a cannot map to convert the encoding and decoding instead of just direct connections. So redesign the circuit will be a better move here. Alright, so as I just said, as I just last said, we need a mod 10 on this place. Let's say this is the second display displaying. We need a mod 10 and a mod 6 here. So combine, if they are combined, they're actually mod 60 from 0 to 59, right? So what can we see here? Just now I've mentioned that if you cascade the counters, you get the multiplication. So if you cascade 6 and 10, you get 60, right? So the output of mod 10 and the mod 6, if they are cascaded, they will become a mod 60. What does this mean? The reset to the clock. This means that because in a mod 10 counter, the reset output it's activated every 10 cycles from 0 to 9, right? So, if they are, if they are activated every 10 cycles, 
you can see that 10 numbers pass through here and then it will switch one number here right and there's a total of six numbers here zero to five and so during those resets once it resets it will change the output here it will move the output by one ascending counting zero to one two two all the way to five so this is just a basic connection and this is how the clock should look like you only need one clock input set at two hertz so that it is displaying one second per real life second what does this mean i mean one second on this clock per real life second because you want it to you want it to toggle two times for it to complete one number here in this second so you want two hertz and you can see mod 10 mod 6 mod 10 mod 6 and finally your mod 12 connected to two inputs this is a more, more special case i will dis discuss about it later the connection here is a tad bit complicated than minutes and seconds all right the second part this is a mod 10 counter its design is actually the same as the counter i've discussed in the last video so the re you can see the reset occurs at this is the blue line is the reset and you can you can see when the second and the fourth flip flop is outputting one the reset will occur right so the reset occurred at be reminded that this is the 2 to the power of 0 place 2 to the power of 1 as when you are writing the binary number you are writing it in this way in this form alright so the reset occurs at 1 0 1 0 which is 10 in decimal system and the same thing applies for this the reset occurs at it's actually this so the reset occurs at 1 1 0 meaning 6 so this is a mod 6 counter and in this design the reset occurs at here 1 1 0 0 and it is 12 because 8 plus 4 just simple binary to decimal conversion now you got the counter the structure of how to build the counter let's go to the essential of this video which is the bcd to 77 conversion right now in your mind you imagine the numbers for example if you are if you are displaying zero it should be like it should be like this right so the only part missing is the g section g section here missing in the zero so when you are displaying the zero all the sections should be lit aside from g g is zero so that is dark so it's dark and you see a zero number and in number one only b and c is lit so only b and c is lit the others should be zero in number two f and c are zero the others are all ones in this plane three f and e are, f and e are zero see this is three so
and when you are displaying 4, AED are 0. When you are displaying 5, B and E are 0. Six only B is zero. Seven, seven only light up A B C. Eight is everything, and nine is having E and D at zero. All right now you have this table. Now, this is the from 0 to 9, counting from 0 to 9. This is the sequence for the A segment, the A segment. Sequence for B segment, and all the way through G. Now we will try to complete the Carnot map here. It's a lot of work, and you must Make it carefully so that you won't make any mistakes because one mistake can result in a very serious error and you might not be able to detect where the error occurred when you have built the circuit and you waste a lot of time on trying to fix that error by redoing this calculation again. So now you want to start your careful calculation on this all right now let's fill up these segments following following the truth table we built here just follow the coordinates let's say if it's 0 0 0 0 you have 1 so you see that 0 0 0 0 you have 1 oops you have 1 here all right let's start Alright, now you want to try to get the XOP, SOP expression and be reminded that in a Carnot map, when you are circling the ones, you can include this don't care terms, this X here, don't care terms, to your convenience and you can also, um, you can also do it across boundaries like across the above and bottom like there are no boundaries like they are continuous you can actually circle them like that or if the four corners are your target boxes you can also circle them like this right because it is continuous all around all right let's start
Alright, now we have obtained all our SOP expressions for all seven segments here. And this is for the mod 10 and mod 6 because you see this only goes from 0 to 9. So if you are having a mod 12, there will be a different case. We need to open up this row and this row. We need to open up these two rows and replace them with the display of 0 and 1 here. Because the counting sequence of our units of hours is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is ended with a 0, 11 is ended with a 1, and then we are resetting it to 10 to zero zero again so we need two more rows so how do we do that we need another design for this okay here we have the mod 12 and i've replaced the two rows here with the zero and one displays and then we have a new pattern so we just fill it in like the last part Fill it in and write the SOP expressions. If you think this is fun, you can try to do it yourself. But it is very tiring and you cannot get one number wrong. Because even if you get one number wrong, or if you are circling it um, not to the best case, you are not getting the most efficient circuit. So. Yeah, this is all the SOP expressions you will need to build the circuit. Like, if you're having a B not D not and C D not, you want to do this. You want to do this? You need to connect them, right? And then you need to add them and you will get a segment E input so this this output you will connect it to the 7 segment display A, B, C, D, E so you will connect it to this connection in the Logisim software the position of these ports these input ports on the 7 segment display can vary from manufacturer to manufacturers and this is all for the for the mod 12 bcd to seven segment conversion and now let us get back to the counters all right now we want to connect all our discuss part just now we want to connect the counters we want to connect the conversion BCD to 7 segment con conversion. You will see this connection later. And this is the table for my circuit. You need one clock input, 19D type flip flop, 17, 76 N gates, 6, a total of 6, 7 segment displays. 35 OR gates, 16 NOT gates, and 1 constant high input. The 1 constant high input is for the hours display. You will see later why it was added. Alright, welcome to Logisim again. And now you can see here, you see this input for the segment of A. It is connected to these four, these four inputs, two from end gates and two directly from the output of the flip-flops. So how do you connect them? 
previously previously we can see that we have a b c d here right and we have a representing 2 power of 3 and d representing 2 to the power of 0 and so this gate this flip flop it represents 2 to the power of 0 so it is d this line here is d and through the not gate this is not d and c b and this line here is a the line from the fourth flip flop and you can see this is a mod 10 counter this is the first the rightmost digit from our clock the rightmost digit is here this one and below it you can see that the reset circuit is connected to the clock of the next display and we have a mod 6 counter here what does this do? it counts from 0 to 5 obviously and you can see you can modify this circuit simply by taking out the fourth flip flop and modifying the reset circuit and you remove the connections where the fourth, fourth flip flop takes you see the connection here is connected to A it is connected to F every connection it leaves behind you just delete the connection and you can leave the gates like as it is as long as there are no one input and gates for example if you have removed the connection to the fourth flip flop and you have one input and gates here this and gate will be meaningless right if it is meaningless that means you can remove the end gate too and just reconnect here all right so this is the second place here so this cascaded counters it makes up a mod 60 counter to count the seconds and the very same thing for minutes we have also 0 to 59 mod 60 counters they are exactly copy and paste connections now comes the special part the mod 12 so we have since we want two digits in a mod 12 instead of just one digit you want two digits and this this tens of hours digit the tenth place you want it to only display zero or one the sequence goes like this right all the way to zero nine and then 10 and then 11 and then 00, zero again and it recycles right so what do you want is this this one it changes on the 10th the 10th tick and then it changes again on the 12th tick right so that it goes back to the 00, zero display so that it shows zero so well, how do you actually do this first you must consider that you need 12 states for the units of hours input how come it is 12 because it goes like this 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 so you can see 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 all the way to 9 and then 0, 1 and then only the cycle repeats itself 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 so you need a 2 special case here so you need to calculate the mod 12 which is the 
colorful spreadsheet I just shown you guys okay so how do you make this follow your command of changing on the 10th tick and reset on the 12th tick you can do it like this this is a 7 segment display right and it is common that in both 0 and 1 these two segments are always light up and these two segments are B and C and you can see that the Logisim software B and C is here so with a constant high output you connect it to here right and the other input you connect it with a D flip flop the D flip flop with its Q output connects to the rest of the input ports aside from G G is not connected because segment G is not light up in 0 the clock of this D flip flop is from the 10th tick on the counter of the mod 12 counter so you have a mod 12 counter right it reset on the 12th tick right but you can still add a circuit so that the circuit is activated on the 10th tick just like what you did in the mod 10 counter you just add one end gate and proper connections so this is the mod 10 connection from the mod 12 counter and the reset condition of this D flip flop is taken from the reset condition of the mod 12 counter this way it will reset at 12 right so at the 12 which is here it will reset to 0 that's what we wanted right so oh I mean here you are actually controlling this now on the 12th you want to reset it to 0 alright so you have the basics down let's see how will it work in Logisim so these connections are flowing the mod 12 diagram is not same it's not same to this it is slightly modified you have a mod 12 circuit here this end gate is for mod 10 so on the 10th tick it toggles this D flip flop here and this is the constant high input feeding into lighting these two segments and this is the reset sharing the same reset from this circuit from this counter which resets at the 12th step so let me just show how this works all right so we are at 0 9 hours it will turn to 10 11 and back to 0 so this is how this is how you want to configure your digital clock so basically this is all the necessary parts for your digital clock and for aesthetic purposes I have connected them in a way uh, this is lazy people's job I just drag it down and let Logisim do the connection so it looks ugly so if you are doing it as an assignment your lecturer will scold you if you connect them like this it's very ugly alright so this is the seconds this is the minutes and this is the hour let us try to see how it looks all right let's let just speed it up or we will never see the hour segment changing you can see 
four five minutes can change the frequency now we have 15 minutes plus you can change the frequency again all the way to 4096 hertz now we are at two hours three hours because my monitor is not running at 4000 hertz so you cannot see every single change on this and the recording is only at a maximum of 60 hertz 9 hours and we are 10 hours in 11 hours in 11 hours and oops slightly slightly off the mark and we are at 1 minute and 34 seconds again and this is the clock in performance and if you set it at 2 hertz and it will act just like a normal clock would and you can see it progress at the same speed right so this is the basics on how do you build a digital clock using only the most of the basics and some counters all right so through today's video we have learned that counters are very important in digital logics and that my solution is not the best you can still decrease the component needed in this circuit to get the same performance if you make some thinking and try some methods and do leave a comment if you have any question or suggestions on either this circuit or making the videos more attractive and thank you for watching have a good day and hope you do well in your studies thank you